Grab yourself a nice cold drink and pull up a chair. I'm Joe Shib and it's Monday, so let's watch a Monday Melee. This week from the Divergent Gaming Amateur Series, we have Gale Force Esports versus King of Blades Alpha on Battlefield of Eternity. It's been a very close game thus far, with both teams even on structures and XP, so let's jump into the action just before the second Immortal phase. First thing I want you to notice is the creep spread that Zagara has managed to get out. At first glance, it appears that King of Blades Alpha has spotted Gale Force, but they have not. Creep vision comes from the tumor, not from the creep itself, which is why you have to put a tumor in fog to see inside it. That means that even though Gale Force is on creep, they are still invisible, because the tumor itself does not have line of sight to their team. Now, King of Blades wants to defend here, but but they can't continue to wait because there is a great Merc push going on up top from the excellent timing of Gale Force Esports. In response, King of Blades sends Zagara up to clean it up and also decides to take their own Merc camp to try and get a counter push. However, as we saw previously, Gale Force Esports was waiting in the wings and ambushes their immortal as soon as they are out of the picture. This enables Gale Force to push halftime immediately. As halftime descends, Gale Force is initially going to play defense, but decides their time would be better spent clearing the mercenaries before returning to finish their immortal. They leave Muradin behind for defense and go clear as a four-man, but King of Blades Alpha spots a good opportunity to pick off some squishies and they abandon their defense to try and get some high-value kills. Let's pause here a moment and examine the positioning of both teams. King of Blades has done an excellent job catching Gale Force off guard here. With Muradin left behind to defend the Immortal, they basically have full access to the squishy backline. Now the red team has the luxury of being able to choose any target they want right now, and they decide to go after Kael'thas, which is going to come back to bite them. Leoric burns his Wraithwalk to get better position on Kael'thas, and the Monk is just behind. As the only one capable of peeling right now, Thrall drops a perfect Sunder, buying Muradin the time necessary to join the engagement. Unfortunately, Wailing Arrow overlaps and hits no one. Three things happen simultaneously here. As Monk is about to go down, he pops Seven-Sided Strike, more for survivability than to get damage on Thrall. Falstad lands and blows his Gust, and Leoric drops his Entomb on the Medic. Though King of Blades chose this engagement, they aren't in a position to focus the best targets, which leaves them vulnerable. Zagara's actually losing her duel with Muradin, forcing the monk to abandon Leoric to save her, but she still has to pop Ma to stay alive. Tassadar is too out of position to do anything worthwhile thanks to Thrall's initial Sunder. The only two people that are actually in a position to damage the correct target are splitting that damage, as Leoric is on Kael'thas and Falstad is on the Medic. Gale Force, however, is able to punish the person most out of position, in this case Leoric, as they DPS him down and he is the first to fall. As Leoric goes down, both healers turn their attention to Thrall and manage to burst him down, but Zagara's decision to stop inside an enemy minion wave and self-stun with Banelings gives Sylvanas an opportunity to wraith over and quickly finish her off. With the advantage secured, Gale Force Esports abandons the rest of King of Blades and heads down to finish off their immortal. So let's watch that fight again at full speed. And I'm actually going to play that a couple of times at full speed just because so much happens so quickly in this fight. King of Blades had a great start with the surprise ambush, but the decision to go on Kael'thas instead of the Medic really cost them here. In fact, Zagara splits damage further here by going after Thrall. The Medic does not need line of sight to be able to heal Kael'thas, and though he is trapped on the other side of the wall, he can still keep Kael'thas very healthy. If you have the opportunity to focus the Medic, you should always focus the Medic. Secondly, Mighty Gust is a very powerful ability when used in the right way. It's an extremely high skill cap ultimate. Falstad used his ultimate as he landed, which meant he had very little time to assess the best use. If Falstad had instead used his ability on Muradin, or to disengage entirely since this had become a bad engagement, it would have allowed Zagara to save her maw for a better use or allowed his team to regroup entirely. The last thing I want to point out here is that this team fight ended in a 1 for 2 trade. A lot of teams think the fight is not over until a team wipe occurs, but Gale Force smartly gives up the chase and goes to put more work in on their immortal with less enemy interference. This immortal actually ends up winning them the game. Game. Remember kids, it's not always about the team wipe, it's about prioritizing the most effective way to win the game. In this case, they are better served by getting a full health immortal push than cycling through the enemy death timers. Well, that'll do it for this week's Melee. I want to take this opportunity to thank Divergent Gaming for hosting the tournament and Zoya and Dreadnought for casting it. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. We are still taking Amateur Hero League submissions via joshipgaming at gmail.com for the new series, and we are starting to stream more on Twitch during the week. Lastly, our outro today has been replaced by Dreadnought's moving rendition of Forever Dead, which is available in the description along with the link to the full fight. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next week. Red.